we studied in the previous lessons that the study of fiqh is divided into two main categories. Firstly, ibadat, the acts of worship, and secondly, al-mu'amalat, which are interactions and transactions. And we studied previously the book of purification, the book of salah, the book of funerals, the book of zakah, and fasting, and hajj. So we studied this in the previous lessons. Now we will begin studying the section of al-mu'amalat, transactions and interactions. And we mentioned that when the ulama, when the fuqaha, when they wrote these books, they wrote them according to your needs. So the first chapter they begin with when it comes to the section of mu'amalat is al-buyu' wa shara is buying and selling. Why? Because each one of us is in need of buying and selling. And we will mention concise principles by which we can understand the rulings pertaining to buying and selling, renting and such matters. Firstly, the base default ruling when it comes to buying and selling and transactions, is it that the asal is it is permitted and allowed or is the asal that it is haram? For example, the, the management of the masjid, outside the masjid or in the canteen area, they are selling books. And this one says it's haram to do so. How can you sell to students? And these are students of knowledge and you're selling books to them. And the other one will say, no, it's halal. So which one of the two statements is So which one of the two views is correct? And the correct view is that the asal, the base ruling or the default ruling when it comes to buying and selling is that everything is halal. Unless there is a specific evidence which makes it haram. So that brother who was saying that no, it's not allowed and it's haram. You say to him, give me your evidence. But you ask him not in a rude manner, rather you ask him politely that explain the ruling to me, explain the evidence to me, what's the evidence for this? And if the evidence is clear, then I'll return back from my error. And Sheikh Ibrahim in his supermarket, he buys and sells, he sells, he, spell, he sells food stuff and he sells planes, sells cars, he sells metals and, and wood and computers, he sells mobiles. So the base ruling of selling these matters and anything else is that it is permitted. And, and Sheikh Ibrahim says that nobody is allowed to tell me that something is haram for me to sell in my supermarket, supermarket except if there's an evidence which makes it haram. And this is the base ruling in Islam. And we are going to summarize those matters which forbid a transaction and we will mention three matters specifically. So if any one of these matters are found in the supermarket of Sheikh Ibrahim, then that transaction or the selling of that merchandise, it becomes haram. So the first thing which makes a transaction haram is al-gharar and al-jahala. Secondly, al-dhulm. And then thirdly, al-riba. The Sheikh will explain. So the first thing which makes a transaction haram is al-gharar wal-jahala. If we enter into the supermarket and we find cartons and there's nothing written on the carton. So if, for example, in the supermarket he has a carton or a box and there's no writing on the box and all it says is there's a phone inside these boxes and in each box is a phone and he says that each box you pay a thousand pounds for the box. But you do not know which phone is inside that box. It may be an iPhone, it may be a Samsung or a Huawei or one of the other phones or maybe one of the older phones and you don't know what's inside that box and neither does he allow you to open the box. But you have to pay a thousand pound sterlings for whatever phone is in that box. And if the customer says, but I want to check and know which phone is inside the box. And then he says, well, it's an iPhone. Okay, but this could be iPhone 6. But if he said, no, every iPhone in each box, it is iPhone 13. And if the customer replies and says, but I want to look at the phone so I know which type of iPhone 13 it is, meaning how many cameras, what's the size of it, uh, what's the memory in it. I want to see what the phone is. I want to look inside. And so he says, no, you're not allowed to check which type of iPhone 13 it is. This is haram. So this transaction, it is haram because it contains al-gharr wal-jihala, which is an ambiguity. Or for example, if he says, enter into the section of mobile phones, but close your eyes, and any phone which you touch, you can buy it for 200 pounds, and you've closed your eyes. This is also haram. 
Now, uh, if the brother said that we have a stall in Manchester in which everything is for one pound. So is this halal or ha is this halal or not? It's halal. Why? Because you are able to enter into the store and you're able to check the details of each uh, merchandise which is being sold. Wow. And in most cases, each piece is a pound or maybe more. And sometimes people will say that this mobile phone which is in my pocket, you can have it for 200 pounds, but you're not allowed to look at the phone. And perhaps that phone, its value is 200 pounds, and perhaps its value is 50 pounds. So this is also haram. So this is the first type of thing which makes something haram, and it is al-gharar wal-jihala, meaning an ambiguity, and you don't know the details of the thing which you are buying. So uh, perhaps he has a number of cars with him, like his Mercedes, and a BMW, and a Porsche, and a Toyota, and a Peugeot, and all of these cars have a different value. And he says that I'm going to sell you one of my cars, but I'm not going to specify which car it is. But you have to buy it for half a million. This is also haram. And it's haram because it contains gharar, meaning you don't know exactly which car and the details of the car. So whenever there's ambiguity, gharar or jahala in a transaction, then it is haram. Now we come to the second uh, matter, which makes a transaction haram. Uh, if a person says, but I buy my phones from the internet, and even though you have not seen the phone itself, but on the website it will mention to you the model of the iPhone, meaning this is iPhone 13. And then it will mention to you that it's an iPhone 13 plus, and then its memory is 256, and its color is sky blue. And then the, the agent is a particular company. So all the details of the phone are mentioned. Here, the transaction is correct. There's no ambiguity in the merchandise. It's clear and detailed. Now, the second matter which makes a transaction haram is oppression, vulm. So Sheikh Ibrahim, he took the phone of Abu al-Abbas and he sold it without his permission. And Abu al-Abbas says to him, why did you sell my phone? And he says to him that, do you call this a mobile phone? Is this really a mobile phone? I'll sell it for you and it's worth it to get a good price from it. But Abu al-Abbas says to him, no, this is haram and this is oppression. How are you selling my phone without my permission? And I did not make you my representative. Because here, Ibrahim, he sold that which he does not own or have any right to. So the second matter which makes a transaction haram is for you to sell something which you do not possess or own. And this is dhulm, oppression. And then the third matter which makes a and transaction yeah, cool. null and void is when the transaction, it contains riba. So Ibrahim, in his, Sheikh Ibrahim in his supermarket, he s sells gold. And, and a person comes along and he wants to buy a one kilo block of gold. So Ibrahim says to him that one kilo block of a bar of gold, it's a million pounds. And the buyer says, I've got no issue with that. So no. he says that I want to buy a one kilo bar of gold. And Ibrahim, he sets his price. And he goes, okay, I'm happy with that price. Give me the one kilo bar of gold, but I don't have any cash with me right now. In five minutes, I'm going to go to the bank and I'm going to take out the money and I'll come straight back to you and I'm going to give you the money which we agreed on. Take, uh, you can, and you can take guarantees from me. Take my phone, take my passport, take my card, keep these with you and, and give me the gold and I'm going to come with the money in five minutes. This is haram and this is the riba. And this brother, his wife said to him that this particular gold which I own is old and I don't like it. And I want the new type of gold which is being sold in Sheikh Ibrahim's shop. So his wife, she collected all her gold and it came to one kilogram, but it's old. And then the husband brings the one kilo of old gold to Ibrahim. And he said, take this kilo of gold, which is old and give me new gold so I can give it to my wife and she can be pleased with. It. And he says to him, okay, I will take a kilo of the old gold and in exchange, I will give you half a kilo of the new gold. And he says it's haram. Why? Because it is riba. But he replies, but the gold which you are giving me is old and the gold which I have is new and there's a difference between them. And this is also haram. Why? Because gold has to be sold or exchanged in the same amounts. A kilogram of gold for a kilogram of gold. And if a person was to say 
But if you right now, if you were to take this old gold and you would sell it, even though it's a kilogram, however, its value is only, will only match half a kilogram of the gold which I have. So why is it haram? It's haram because it is riba. Now, what should this one do? A way out of this is for this person to go and sell the kilo of his gold. So what he can do is he can go sell his gold for cash, the one kilo of gold for cash, and then with that money, then he can purchase whatever Sheikh Ibrahim is selling, even if it only comes to half a kilo. So this is how it is correct. Sheikh al-Mithal al-Awwal. So Ibrahim said to him, okay, come now, let's calculate it, let's work it. That which you have is a kilo. And Sheikh Ibrahim says to him that this kilo of gold which you have, according to my calculations on today's rate, it's worth, for example, a million. Meaning, its current value in the market is a million. So choose whatever new piece of gold which you want. Which, and he chose a kilo of new gold. So if he said to him, let me check the value of the new uh, the gold which I have he said your kilo of gold its value according to t today's market is 1 million pounds and the kilo of new gold which I am selling its market on the value today is one and a half million so let's exchange the gold but give me an extra half a million is this correct? this is also not correct Okay, no. a new example and now there's another situation and that is that the one who is, wants to exchange a kilo of his old gold for the new, he says to him, instead of me going to a different shop, external to this, and going to sell to them, why don't I just sell the gold to you, and you give me the money, and then I will buy the new gold from you. And the Sheikh said that this is permitted as long as they don't have a prior agreement that he will buy the new gold with that money, meaning... He sells the old gold as a separate transaction. And there's no agreement for him to buy the new gold. And then separately, he can buy the new gold if he wants. But if there's a prior agreement, then maybe they will try to find a way to bring riba into the transaction. If a person said to Ibrahim that I want to buy a kilo of gold, but in installments. Nam installments. And every month I will pay off an installment. Is this correct? Also, this is not correct when it comes to buying gold. Because when it comes to buying or exchanging gold for gold or gold for currency, then it has to be in one sitting and both the commodities have to be exchanged and it has to be immediate. So, just the last example which the Sheikh gave, the very scenarios, the point was that when it comes to exchanging gold for gold or currency for gold, it has currency. to be cash. طيب. نعم. أني الذي تأخر وذهب إلى البنك خمسة دقائق. نعم. The point is that you cannot delay the exchange by five minutes or ten minutes. It has to be immediate, and the commodities have to be exchanged then and there. So these three matters which we have mentioned: firstly, الغرر والجهالة ambiguities; secondly, الظلم oppression; and thirdly, الربا. These are the main causes of a transaction being haram. What's correct in the first scenario is if Sheikh Ibrahim said to his customer that I'm going to keep the gold with me and you go to, your, to the bank and go collect your cash and then when you, when you bring your cash then we will exchange. But it has to be hand in hand, meaning it has to be immediate. You give me the cash, I give you the gold without delay. We said that any form of transaction that if we differ over this form of transaction, the base ruling is that it is halal. Also, regarding the saying of Allah subhanahu, the meaning of which is, and cooperate and work with each other upon goodness and piety, and do not cooperate with each other upon sinning and oppression. Sheikh Ibrahim, in his supermarket, he sells grapes. And is it halal or haram for him to sell grapes? It's halal and there's nothing wrong with this. So now if a person comes to him and says to him that perhaps people are buying grapes from you, however they are manufacturing wine and alcohol from, this, from these grapes. But, but the thing is that a person could buy water and could use water to also manufacture something which is haram. So, yeah. it, so it's possible that even if a person was to buy water, 
and then utilize some of this water to produce alcohol or something which is haram. So, Sheikh Ibrahim says that the base ruling of buying and selling is that it is halal. And similarly, when it comes to the phones, it's possible that somebody might buy a phone from you and he's going to utilize it in a manner which is haram. And the same with a computer and cameras and even a mobile phone charger, it could be used in haram. So our reply is, or our view is that the base ruling when it comes to buying and selling is that matters are halal. But if a person came to Sheikh Ibrahim and said to him that we want to purchase from you one ton of grapes. And if he tells him that this ton of grapes, he is going to manufacture, or he is going to ferment them, so alcohol is produced. Here, Sheikh Ibrahim says to him, A'udhu Billah, this is haram, and I will not assist you upon sin. And the buyer might say to him, but I'm not asking you to do anything wrong, or you to do anything haram. You are merely selling those grapes to me, and I'm doing whatever I want to do. And Sheikh Ibrahim replies that as, as long as the asl remains, that the asl is halal, I sell to everybody. But if I know from you specifically that you are utilizing these products to make something which is haram, then I will not assist you in a sin. Otherwise, I am your associate and partner in this sin. So this supermarket, mashallah, is big. And a man came to him and he said, we want a corner of the supermarket, which is one square meter. So a, a company or a person, he comes to Sheikh Ibrahim in his supermarket and he says to him that I'd like to rent from you a small corner of your supermarket, one meter square, and I'm going to place a gambling machine in that corner. This is not permitted. What is qimar? What is gambling? And how does this gambling industry work? It's like when sometimes you get text messages that if you ring this particular number for a small charge, you have a chance of winning something. And what happens is that the, the company, they go to so many people that they end up uh, with an income or turnover of five million pounds. And then they prize the winner, he may attain a million. So they've profited four million and they've given a million to the winner. And the reality is that those people who are taking part, either they profit or they lose. And in the majority of the cases, 99% of those people are all losers. And there's one person who may profit. And this is haram. So these competitions, which all of you know and hear of, and you receive these messages in this manner, if you ring in and you're going to be charged X amount, and then you have a chance to win this prize, all of this is haram. If the person objects and he says, but I've only paid 10 pence for my phone call, text message, even that is haram. Uh, Sheikh Ibrahim, his uh, zabain, his uh, customers, uh, and the turnover of his supermarkets is declining. So in order to attract new customers, he places uh, an attraction there. And he says that he displays his Mercedes, and he displays his Porsche and he says that the winner will get one of these cars. So is this type of attraction, is this halal or haram? So if Ibrahim asks that is this type of attraction, is this permitted, we ask him. Are you charging people to enter into this draw? Or have you raised the price of your merchandise in order for people to enter into this draw? And if he says no, I myself, I am paying for the Porsche. I'm just using it to attract customers, but there's no entrance fee and the merchandise is, at his, is as it was. Then we say that this is halal. But if he says no, how this competition works is that each person buys a raffle ticket and the price of that raffle ticket is 10 pence or a pound and they place it in the box and then I choose a raffle ticket and the winner gets the Porsche or the Mercedes. Why? Because there's costs and there's admin fees and they, you know, I want to take out some of these costs. This is haram. And, and this is prevalent. I mean, there'll be a raffle ticket, a piece of paper. And this piece of paper is for a pound of a particular price. It's haram. So now there's a new iPhone which is about to come out and it is iPhone 14. And because of this iPhone 14 which, is, which the release is ensuing, he has uh, many iPhone 13s and therefore he wants to make a competition. So what did he do? So, for example, if the iPhone 14 is about to be released and he has much stock 
of iPhone 13. And he wants to get rid of his iPhone 13s. So what he says is he makes the prize, which is his Mercedes. And he says that buy the iPhone 13s, and one of those people who buys all these iPhones, one of them, he will be the winner, and he will win the Mercedes. Now, the iPhone 13, it was, for example, a thousand pounds. But in order to enter this competition, he has increased the price of each iPhone by a hundred pounds or 200 pounds. This now is also haram. And let's say, if he discounts the iPhone 13 by 50%, is it allowed for him to discount the price? Now it's permitted. And if he says that whoever buys an iPhone from the market today, from my supermarket today, he will have a general 10% discount on anything else in the supermarket. Halal. This is also halal. And, and this is also halal. Why? Because the base ruling when it comes to buying and selling is that matters are halal unless there's an evidence which specifically makes it haram. Wallahu a'lam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, jazakum Allahu khayram.